and trying to also consider that it's a much older candle. It's a little bit different. And that's all I'm going to give you because I'm, I'm putting together a full video. Uh, I think there's some truth to, uh, behind, you know, there's there's good reason to still buy black band Yankee candles. If whenever you can find them, if you're willing to pay the price for them, if you have a favorite candle that was around in the 90s, track it down in a black band. Now, it's always a little bit of a risk because some of them may have been stored like in someone's windowsill for 10 years and the candle's completely destroyed but that is certainly not the case for this one so there's that all right so the candle that we've all been waiting for i'm going to postpone it for just one more second because look at that you know what that is oh oh that is a matchbook of yankee candle Date would have to be in the early 90s because we see the, the, uh, was it the, I don't know how to pronounce it, Trajan, Tra Trajan, Trajan font was finally used and the, the word company was dropped. Uh, this will be going up on eBay. Why? Because I have another one that's in my collection. And Eric, is Eric still here? Yes, so we're talking about Yankee Candle Village. Is that something? Yeah, uh, Anthony says, I would say you could easily spend a half day there and you could even make a full day out of it. And if you wanted to check out Kringle Candle Store, it's 10 minutes away. All of that is completely true. Um, the only thing I would add to that is go on a weekday off season if you can if you went tomorrow morning whole place is yours it's like an empty amusement park slash shopping mall you're the only one like dawn of the dead style um it's it's somewhat surreal uh, if you go on the weekends it's great it's great to see the families and people you know the expressions on their faces but for me it's I just love having the place to myself. Eric is still here. Eric, does this look familiar to you? This is something that I've forgotten. Wait, is this not from Eric? There's just so much stuff coming in the mail. No, I am sorry. I'm sorry, Eric. This was not from you. This was from Political Clownfish. And I don't think we have political clownfish in the chat room today. But for Christmas, he did something really uh, special. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't up for the challenge. What he did was he took a bunch of wax pieces, like remnants of different candles or tarts or votives. So it looks like there were tarts. And he labeled them by letters, he gave me a list of instructions of having me try to figure out the fragrance, excuse me, of each one. And I tried, but since these were already melted to such a point, the fragrance is just not there. When I was smelling them, I mean, I know that, say, for example, this one could easily be um, April showers. But I don't want to go out and be wrong because, you know, a lot of the fragrance oils have diminished. But really cool idea, and I do want to apologize for not accepting your challenge, but I want to commend you for the excellent idea. Um, and maybe in a private email, I'll try to give it my best, give it my all, and try to name these candles. Excellent idea. Now the time we've all been waiting for, and if you're still here and you've been waiting to see this, 
I appreciate it. Uh, we have the oldest Yankee candle I personally have ever seen. And guess what? I own it. I own it. Um, for many years, I didn't even know it existed. If you do an image search on Google or any search engine and you type in the oldest Halloween candle, uh, there was a candle released probably in the early 90s, mid to early 90s, simply called Halloween. It was a black band jar and it had a picture, a picture of jack-o'-lantern and it was just called Halloween. But that would have been at the very earliest, um, like 89. Um, and I have one that's older than that. Are you ready? Now, I'm not saying this is the oldest, but this is certainly the oldest one I've ever seen pictured or have held in my hand. It's another pillar candle. Are you guys excited? I want to hear one person say it's ex you're excited. Da, da, da. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Hugh John Carpenter's Halloween theme. Um, here we go. Pillar candle. A little bit different. You see that it has the, the potato chip ri ridges, ruffles. Uh, and let me flip it around and show you what this is. Look at that. Can you read that? Where is Spooky Villages? He would be going insane right now. Uh, this candle is called Halloween Candy, and we do see that candy corn uh, on the picture. This was when, in 1986, Yankee Candle officially moved from this hand-colored label to... Uh, picture printed color uh printed label so this is pinpointed to 1986 um i'm almost certain of it it could have been around you know could have been around again for 87 88 but uh this this too from all i know and if anyone has any evidence of a candle that's older than this Please let me know because this is the stuff that really gets me excited. Again, this candle is going to be uh, dual colored. On top, we have kind of a butter cream uh, color. I'm sure it was much more yellow when it was released. And we have the orange on the bottom. I don't know if there was a yellow and a white layer. Can't really tell. But let's read the description of this candle. This is the best part. Halloween candy. American youngsters of the early 1900s used Halloween as a night for mischief. Out after sundown, in disguise, they gleefully soaked, soaked shadows. Now, I don't know what that means. They gleefully soaked, soaked windows, windows. See, it's printing is a little bit worn off. That makes sense. They soaked windows, toppled outhouses that's gross and swapped cows between neighbors these kids sound like really irresponsible uh i'll continue trick-or-treating came to be as a it's it's fading it's fading trick-or-treating trick-or-treating came to be as can't find that word, not, not to wreak havoc. I'm guessing it's more or less came to be the, the point was not to, to, to wreak havoc. Nowadays, little ones scurry between houses carrying sacks of a loot. Halloween is a night for make-believe and fun. This is my definition of Halloween. I know a lot of people don't celebrate Halloween for many different reasons, but yes, to me, it's 
that's what Halloween encapsulated encapsulates. It's 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 a night for fantasy. It's a night for make believe, and um, I think it's one of the most special holidays. But the big question is, what does this smell like? Is this going to be a cotton can cotton cotton candy corn scented candle? I'm not going to open it. At least not today, but there's always a little tiny hole. I just made one. And I would love to tell you that this smells like sour balls and skittles, lemon heads, juju bees, Mike and Ike's good and plenty's. Um, but it does seem to be uh, a very similar aromatic profile to any candy corn uh, scented candle. Now, the question is, would this wax smell the same as this down here? I think so. But I'm not going to take the plastic off of this. But I am getting that vague. It's not as strong as, say, something like this. Uh, but then again, candy corn has always been um, a vague-ish candle. This was the 2013. A lot of people made fun of that label. I think this is one of the best. You know, it's just candy corn is not, was never really a powerful fragrance, but we have no reason to complain now because we have Sweet Seduction, which is a massively intense candle. So there it is, folks. Uh, let me see if I can get any more information off the bottom. Uh, there's just burning instructions on the bottom. It does say Yankee Candle, South Deerfield. So whenever your candle says South Deerfield on there, you know that the candle can't be older than 1983. And because this one has the printed label, uh, that happened in 1986, the, the color printed label. So there it is. What do you think? I still would love to get that Halloween candle in the apothecary jar, the house warmer. Um, but I'm not going to pay $2,000 for it. Let's see what you guys are saying. Witch's Brew is fantastic. I agree. I buy it every year. <laughs> Carrie said, I thought you were opening it. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, uh, to, I guess further explain the, the buttercream honey, um, fragrance that's very light. It's, that's what candy corn smells like, right? That is a lot of candles. Connor says you mean like here uh, yeah that's this is um, each one of those shelves holds 500 pounds and I have several of these the reason why I'm always filming in this direction this is my office because this right here is disastrous uh, the day I show off all my racks of candles in the office I want to make it look nice, so I am working on that video. You, uh, Carol, you're very welcome. I, I always love sharing. I figured I might as well share on this channel uh, these candles because, what, well, just talking about these few, you know, took about 15, 20 minutes. Um... Jordan asks, why are some online only? What is this in reference to? Autumn dusk? 
Yes, Autumn Dusk was an online exclusive. Um, and what was sad is it never really appeared in the outlets in its US label. It appeared in the UK label, which, you know, sorry for you uh, folks in Europe, Germany, Finland, Italy, uh, wh 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 whatever countries that uh, Yankee Candles are distributed to, but the Autumn Dusk label, I don't usually share my opinions, but for the US was far superior. Very beautiful on the UK label, but um, the, you know, it's, it's the first time that um, the label was actually cropped from a U.S. label. The label for the Europe, U.K. looked like that, and the colors were not as saturated. And look at the difference between that, right, getting close, and that. We didn't even see most of the ground in... The, the UK label. So this was very beautiful. And, you know, I don't do like my favorite scents of the year, because, especially because how am I going to decide between that and this? Moonbeams on um, pumpkins. Speaking of moonbeams on um, pumpkins, this was, that's not it. But I have one with a personalized label that uh, was given to me by the Yankee Candle Village. I want to thank them very much about that. And Yankee Candle recently reached out to me, if you didn't see my Facebook post, uh, a direct message on Twitter. Excuse me. It simply said, uh, we love all your videos. Uh, we'd love to share something with you as well. What is your address? First thing I'm thinking is, oh God, spam but wasn't it was legitimately from yankee candles so there's something that they're sending me in the mail and that's that's very exciting um you know uh, i i hope it's i hope it's just candles i really and not because i just want to throw them in my collection but if yankee candle sends me their candles then a large part of the budget of the show would be saved this way i can review them produce the videos they're getting uh, advertisement for free and um, yeah our, our the production cost of actually buying the Yankee candles will go down ba -ba -bum. all right do we have any questions is there anything um, Yes, okay, that's a good point. I am going to post the link to the Facebook group. Now, this is something that you really should uh, request to join. I did not create this. Our lovely Rachel uh, put this together. There's several new administrators. They're all awesome, working very hard, helping to promote, helping the mission of the candle enthusiast. And it's the best way to keep up to date with everything going on with... Whoa, that is a long link. That is a long link. It won't even let me send it. Just go to the Yankee Candle fan group. The, what's the Yankee Candle? The Candle Enthusiast fan group on Facebook. You'll easily find it. Uh, request to join. They'll ask you a series of questions just to know that you're, you know, nobody who means any harm. And you, you get on in and, uh, yeah, you'll stay up to date. And I love the fact that the main topic of the fan group is not me you know it's what you guys are buying what you guys are burning your stories that is that is that's exactly what i've always wanted i wanted this community of folks that wasn't just driven by me but was driven by 
uh, the combination of myself and the audience. The eBay link didn't work for you either. USR Aromatic Adventures. I could have spelled it wrong. First of all, let me go to it, see if it pops up. Okay, so look, if you take this link and paste it in Google, your first result will be, where'd you guys go? The first result will be uh, follow, follow, aromatic adventures on ebay and i highly recommend you follow because i don't want to annoy everybody with posting every day this is what i have but have on ebay this is what i have up on ebay uh jordan jordan i see at the yankee candle retail stores that they have sheets describing all notes of the candles do you have access to all of these description sheets? The retail store would not give me a copy. Yes, they will not do that. They actually have something called the Fragrance Handbook. The Fragrance Handbook. And this used to be, trust me, I tried the, the hardest thing to get your hands on. I begged, I pleaded. I may have even bribed a few Yankee Candle associates to get my hand on this uh, notebook. I was actually even considering applying for Yankee Candle just to get this book. However, since then, they have released on the websites, and the website, the UK and the US website, the fragrance description, meaning the poetic, like, a night... A, a cool night with purple horizons and mist in the air, you know, very poetic descriptions. And then they have their fragrance notes, the top notes, the mid notes, or uh, the heart notes, and the bass notes. Uh, I caution you though, I caution you who asked the question, Jordan, don't, don't, don't take these literally. Especially when you th see things like sea breeze, driftwood, uh, amber. These things don't have smells. Of course they have smells, but that is not literally what they're putting inside of the candle. Um, again, they're poetic descriptions. Amber is a petrified piece of resin. It can't have a smell. There's nothing to volatize. And whenever you see amber in uh, a description note, it's just usually a combination of uh, vanillas, you know, stronger vanillas or lighter vanillas, depending on the style. And I mentioned it in one of my past videos, labdum. Labdum is used in all of these bath and body products, but it gives you that richer, thicker, more clean smell. And it's easy to smell labdum and think of amber. Yeah, this smells like golden amber. That's another one, golden amber. It's not a thing, people. You can't smell it. Driftwood, driftwood usually means sandalwood. Um, it's not like they're pulling out driftwood from the ocean and extracting oils from it. They wouldn't do that. Nobody would do that. I wish people would do that, but they don't do that. Um, driftwood is just a synonym in the fragrance industry for sandalwood. Uh, and Anne brings up a good point. Um, um, please, no more poetry, Yankee. I have to order online, and that doesn't help a bit. It's a big debate, isn't it? Because there's communication. It's, there's, it's, it's, you could rather be completely literal and say exactly what you put in it, which would be a bunch of aldehydic uh, fragrance oils which would confuse everybody like aldehyde number five and twelve do you guys know what they smell like i i don't know um but 
my guess the way they come up with these fragrance notes is that they have a panel like family feud and they ask people what they smell inside the candle and they ask them to be very descriptive about it and you know things like black orchid will come up you know black sand beach black orchid orchids do have a, a smell uh, but it varies from variety to variety. Black Orchid is one of those that does not necessarily have a distinguishable aroma. Um, but it sounds really pretty when you see a black candle and one of the fragrance notes says Black Orchid. So going back to what I was saying, Jordan, don't take those fragrance notes uh, too literally. Take it with a grain of salt. And always, 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 always smell the candle before you even come close to any of those descriptions. Um, because it does not help you out. What it does is it pre-implants um, expectations in your head. And you don't want that. That is if you really want to become good at evaluating candles. If you really don't care. And the poetry helps you with the communication to help you paint that portrait in your head of what the candle might be, then Yankee's doing a good job. Um, and Kringle Candle uh, started doing it first. So I think Yankee, after all those years, finally started listing the fragrance notes after Kringle started actually f listing on the top sticker of the jar the actual fragrance notes. And it's the same thing with Kringle. Um, they, they literally put green, green as one of their fragrance notes. So it, it's not helping with edu you know, educational purposes. Um, so I recommend, uh, checking out folks like Anthony I unfortunately do not get to watch any other reviewers, evaluators. Uh, whenever Anthony's video comes around, I, you know, I'm relaxing in the morning having coffee. I'll put Anthony's videos on. It just sounds really, you know, kind of, uh, I, I just love it. I mean, it's, it's the way he, it's relaxing. It's kind of like Bob Ross. I hope that's not an insult to you, Anthony, but it's, it's just relaxing to, to hear him speak about the candles. What's different between his videos and mine, or mine are heavily edited, uh, where Anthony just kind of, he picks up the candle and he just goes, and he just talks about it. Stream of consciousness, uh, and you got to admire that. Da, 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 da. So, I see Jackie saying, so funny Cheryl, we want UK stuff. Um, I am starting, I'm, I have started, but I will be from this point forward evaluating both US and UK candles, as long as I can get my hands on the UK. Because there's scary rumors that all of the European fragrances are going to be start they're going to start producing them in, um, in the Czech Republic, out of the factory in Czech Republic. So that means the UK fragrances will never even have been in the United States. A lot of people are upset about this. Obviously, it saves Yankee tons of money. I understand why they would do it. Jordan says, Jordan, you're just bringing up great questions today. I love this. In general, it seems that many of the new Yankee candles are not as strong, strongly scented. Do you agree? Times have changed, Jordan. This is the way I look at it. And for those of you who have heard me give this speech before, I apologize. But the candle world, candle making, the art of mixing fragrance oils with paraffin wax and now soy wax and all different kinds of waxes, um, uh, but um, it's become much safer. 
I think at a certain point, Yankee realized that their candles, the additives, the compounds, the things that they're putting into the candle were dangerous. They were dangerous, but they helped out with the power of the aroma, very strong aromas. So we're going through this transition where Yankee Candle's not going to come out and say our candle's different because the ones we were making before are killing you or damaging your lungs or ruining your eyes or making your, your walls greasy. Um, they're not going to admit to that, um, but the art of making candles has changed. It's become much more eco-friendly. It's become healthier. And with this transition, yes, you know, there are times when you're like, you're smelling a black band harvest. Mine's all the way over there, but here's, here's a relatively new one. Uh, two th 2014, God. I thought it was newer than that. Um, now, this one smells absolutely positively, bombastically, powerfully strong. But uh, other fragrances, maybe like Spiced Pumpkin, I've heard people say... What's the other one people are always complaining about? Spiced Pumpkin? People are saying Spiced Pumpkin? Not as powerful? I mean, yeah, it's, you know, I'm smelling this right now, I'm getting... Honey, honey grams, like the honey... Honey, honey teddy grams. Interesting. Um, but uh, that that is, you know, it's it's the case. I think that the soy wax will give you a, a bigger, powerful smell, but the radius that it covers won't nearly be as uh, strong as a paraffin house warmer. So if you want a very powerful smell in a smaller radius go with the soy keep that wick small small right we love to see the big blazing flame but keep that small where with the paraffin wax you can keep them the the the, the wicks a little bit longer um and uh, it, the the scent won't be as strong but you'll notice it carries further uh, this is all from my years of experimenting with Yankee Candles. And uh, Liz from Witch City Wicks, she has really shown me and taught me a lot about candles and why she's chosen soy wax instead of paraffin wax. Let's get a candle lit. I was supposed to do this at the beginning. Where'd it go? Dreamy Summer Nights. This is my go-to Game of Thrones candle, but I still have a bunch of Game of Thrones themed candles that I'm going to share with you at some point. Let's get this one going. And you'll notice what I did was, is I put this cozy uh, on here. This was sent to me by Music Beauty, YouTube user Music Beauty. It's a hand-stitched, handmade cozy. Uh, if you live like a polar bear like me, I don't even have the heat on in the office right now. Uh, you're going to need this because it takes a lot more heat to melt that paraffin and have it pool out. Uh, you won't have that problem with soy wax. It's a lower viscosity wax. Is there a candle coming to the U.S. soon named White Chocolate? I've seen some pictures of it, uh, but nothing definite. Would love to try to get my hands on it. There's been several White Chocolate themed candles in the past, uh, but this one is strictly White Chocolate, and it is coming to the U.S. I don't know. It sounds something that... If Anthony's still here, maybe he knows. Uh, it sounds to me like it's something that's going to be an online exclusive. Um, and it's probably going to be released probably right before or during the Easter season. 
Oh, you saw... Well, look at this. Eric, thank you. I saw white chocolate in Hallmark already. Man, I don't know what's going on with Hallmark. They're getting candles really early. Really early. So if you look in the description of my recent videos, you'll actually find the entire lineup of what is out and what will be coming out in the first uh, quarter of 2018. So the ones that have already been released, Juicy Citrus Sea Salt, Sun Drenched Apricot and Rose, that's gonna be US and UK, Rainbow Cookie, US and UK, Peaches and Cream, Early Spring Bloom, US and UK, A Calm and Quiet Place, US and UK, Sweet Nothings, U.S. and U.K. Life's a Breeze, which is not out. Um, and if Anthony says uh, Wildflower Blossoms or Blooms is not coming out to March 4th, I'm guessing that's the same date that we're going to see Life's a Breeze. That and Color Me Happy. Um, those two are not going to be in the U.K. We have Wildflower Blooms. White chocolate, uh, and here uh, we have Sweet Candies, which is UK, Misty Mountains, UK, Coconut Splash, UK, Enchanted Moon, UK, Poached Pear Flambe, UK, Sun Kissed Thistle, UK, and Cinnamon and Cedar. UK and most likely the US at some point and Sparkling Flame UK and maybe the US at some point. I just can't confirm for sure because I haven't seen the US labels anywhere. Uh, but I've heard uh, rumors from the UK QVC crowd that Cinnamon and Cedar and Sparkling fl Flame will be making their way to the US. Um, but you can also find them in, in your outlets. Again, if you're shopping at the outlets, look for candles that have sloppy poured wax or wax that's not filled to the top or too high or the label looks really crappy. That's going to give you your highest chance, highest probability that there's nothing wrong with the actual fragrance. The reason why it's at an outlet is because it looks bad aesthetically. So there you go. There's a lot of candles here on this list. If you go into any of my recent videos, you'll find that entire list. Uh, and most of them are, there's plenty of pictures on the website. So just Google image search them, you'll find what the labels look like. I have Color Me Happy uh, in the scent plug. I haven't found the candle yet, nor am I really looking for it. I feel like several people reviewed it, and from their review, it sounds... You know, Eric was even saying um, that from my review, it sounded pretty accurate to what it is. Yes, the men's candle line is discontinued. However, this goes out to everybody. Thank you, Eric. Your review was spot on. Uh, thank you. Um, this goes out to everybody. The men's candle line, this was things like lawnmower, this was on tap, this was man town or man cave. There was a bunch of them. And there was a barbershop collection as well uh, that was geared towards men. They're very expensive. If you look for them on eBay or other any other like secondhand thrift shop sort of websites, if anyone is really interested in one of those candles, I can get them at the most appropriate cost. I don't want to invest in them for myself, but if anyone's desperately looking for any of the men's candles, mm, bacon was another one. Um, I have uh, a source. I, I know people. I know a person. I know a guy uh, where I can get these at a decent price. Two by four. Thank you, Laura. Two by four. That one, 
I really liked. That was probably the one, that and Lawnmower, the ones I really liked. And I just don't see why that's men's collection. Women don't like the smell of Home Depot. Who doesn't like the smell of Home Depot? Um, and I don't know where Yankee is getting this idea, but lawnmower, you know, that's, it's not just men cutting lawns. Candle Cafe, Shane, what are your thoughts on the treasures returning? Um, you know, um... It's interesting, Anthony, because, you know, it's obviously that they're still, they're still trying to figure out the look, the aesthetic. I found cinnamon, cinnamon vanilla, which would be, because it was retired four years ago, I think, I found it at Deerfield, and it, technically that would be a returning favorite or um, a treasure. But it looked perfectly ordinary. It didn't have the gold band returning favorite. It had the keyhole label. And then I found patchouli, which is, had a completely different design for the returning favorite. This year, for Christmas, the returning favorites looked like this. We have all new photographs, but they are almost like a replicas of the original. Just, you can see the, the family's wearing modern clothing. And then here in this gold banner, it says Christmas tree. This is now officially been, it's been, it's been changed. This is my officially, my favorite pine themed Yankee candle. Um, and usually there would have been a banner here that said returning favorite, but what they did now is put returning favorite right on top of the name of the candle. And they actually changed the font too. So this obviously is still trying to figure out the look. Um, as far as, you know, them being authentic to the originals, I feel like they are. I have no qualms. But what scares me is that, is that what happens? A returning favor comes out. Does that mean when it that season it goes away? Is it not going to come back again? You know, uh, one Yankee Candle has this comes from a very very reputable source. Yankee Candle has already decided the returning favorites for Christmas up to Christmas 2019. The decisions are already made. So, like, my question is, are we going to be able to get Christmas tree again next year? I don't think we will, which is kind of upsetting. Uh, that's why I stocked up on that candle. Uh, what else do I think about the returning favorites? Uh, another one that I think has been retired, um, Anthony, is Angel's Wings, which is a very 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 meaningful candle to me if you, ha you don't know why you guys are probably sick of hearing it just look up uh, my mary tyler moore video this is the u.s label the uk label or the original label was always superior to that i actually have it somewhere and i'll flash something real quick what 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 was that what was that can't show you, but uh, I managed to get that photo, personalized photo, on that candle. Yankee, I'm sorry, I had to break some rules. Some. This is interesting. Again, coming from Anthony. The Christmas ones tend to come back often, but the spring, summer, and fall ones are always changing. I can confirm we will see Campfire Treat very soon. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, I didn't know that, but that totally 
right? I mean, that's a candle that everyone loved, and we haven't seen it in a while. Um, uh, yeah, Angel's Wings. Um, thank, thank you, Anthony. Really. Um, I don't know if you saw that Mary Tyler Moore video. I'm kind of embarrassed and shy to, to watch it now. It's not my best ma made video. Um, as far as, you know, narratively speaking, um, I felt like I made it a little bit too dramatic, but it, uh, it was a hundred percent sincere. Um, I actually took Angel's Wings, the candle, my only one that I had at the time, and I brought it to Mary Tyler Moore's final resting place. In fact, um, she has almost been gone for a year. Um, uh, less than a month will be the anniversary. And just for the thrill of it, I might go back Give her a quick visit, and I will be bringing you guys along as well. Shane, any thoughts on Chesapeake Bay coming to Yankee Candle stores? They are coming to the Yankee Candle stores. It's already started in some cases. Um, uh, I don't know when, you know, if there's like a definite date, if you're saying April. That sounds right to me. Uh, they're not at the Yankee Candle Village yet, but I've heard that they have been popping up in storefronts. And I know several of you, I think Anne was saying that Chesapeake Bay was making her ill. Um, uh, certain candles from Chesapeake Bay. They've really upped their game big time. As far as the ones that I have smelled, the ones that I smelled like Candle Power, the, the pop-up in New York City, there was um, New York City at dusk and Central Park. Central Park. Fall in Central Park or autumn in Central Park. And those two were mind-blowing. And even the, wood, the Woodwick candle, Soho. Uh, I hope you guys got your hands on those uh, if you're collectors because... They're, they were exclusive to the Yankee Candle pop-up storefront. Yeah, I mean, Eric, I don't know if this is what you're addressing, but yeah, I feel that what, what happens is Woodwick, Chesapeake Bay is fine, but that's limiting the selection of the Yankee Candles that we're going to see available. Um, and, you know, maybe that's not... A bad thing I think that would drive up their sales if candles weren't available year-round they were more they were only available seasonally like the Halloween candles I think that might create a little bit more anticipation to or incentive to go to Yankee Candle to pick up your favorite seasonal fragrances That was a really nice video. I wonder if that's Nancy's referring to the Mary Tyler Moore. Any updates on fall 2018 or Halloween? Oh my God, you guys are relentless. Last year, Halloween began for me in June. People were already asking questions, so I had to cancel a bunch of plans and summer plans and start hunting down the Halloween candles. I do have some things, but I definitely don't have enough information to create a video yet. Um, none of the candles will be available for me to hold in my hand, unless Yankee Candle sends me some in this package that they're, they, they're, they're going to be sending my way. I'm not, I don't know if I'm what to expect. Yankee Candle might be sh shipping me like a fruit basket they might be shipping me um, something else. All right, Anthony, thank you so much for joining in. It's always a pleasure to have you uh, in the chat room. Uh, keep up the good work and we'll talk to you very soon. And I'll probably write you an email too um, to catch up a little bit. So have a great day, Anthony. Everyone say bye to Anthony.
Ooh. The Troop Loyal collection. Uh, I think they should push it more. Um, because it's not easy to find on the website, nor are they available in the retail stores. I could be wrong. At least the retail stores I've been to, they're not available. Um, but, um... Uh, if I don't find them and they don't have them at Deerfield, I'm going to give it a little bit more time because I have a lot of other things I need to, that are a priority. I'll end up just buying them all. And um, if there's any ones I really want to keep, I'll keep. Otherwise, uh, I'll uh, put them up on the eBay account. So this way you guys have a chance to purchase them. never really go bad Jordan 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 it sounds like you asked a good question question for my wife she has a hundred and seventeen jarred candles how long will they hold their scent if stored properly who responded to that caress responded to that uh, I can testify to that here's here's how I'll do that so Jordan for your wife I have a 1998, 1998 Witch's Brew. Now keep in mind, that candle would have been made differently. Not the scents, but again, the additives, the compounds. That would have been made differently back in those days. And then we have this year's Witch's Brew in the paraffin form, not the soy form. So let me smell these two side by side and uh, see if there's any diminishing. I should smell this one first. No, this one first. Oh, I can't use this one. Somebody, when I bought this, somebody took a forbidden apple lid and put, swapped it. On this. So when I smell the lid, I'm smelling green apple. Alright, so I'll go to, instead of 2017, I'll go to the 2016, which is brutal. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that there's just a little bit more concentration. Um, not necessarily intensity, but there's more concentration. Um, in this candle but again this candle is 20 years old my my suggestion for you is buy a dehum dehumidifier keep it in a nice uh this is kind of a uh this is this office sits at like uh, beneath the foundation of this building so it it it's stays relatively cool in here but the humidity does go high. So I have dehumidifier. Uh, you want to keep it around like 70% humidity. You don't want it completely dry. But the best thing you can do is just shield your candles from light, just the way you would treat coffee. Uh, shield your candles from light. Uh, keep that humidity down. And these candles are cool to the touch. They should be cool to the touch. Just the worst thing you could ever do is like keep them on display uh, all year round with the sun beating on them. Uh, you know, it's the fragrance oils are perishable. So they will, that's what would really destroy them. I don't know why Yankee Candle always says five years. Because again, we have, where's the mistletoe? We have this one. I mean, that's mistletoe. I mean, if I smell that in a store, I might have some suspicions about the quality of the wax because it does smell old, but that doesn't suggest, I'm not trying to suggest that the, 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 the you know, Yankee Candles mistletoe is in there, but I'm smelling a little bit of that old wax smell. So 177 jars, that's a good size collection. 
If it's a collection collection, like you're not going to burn them collection, then you shouldn't have to worry about it. I would burn them, though. I, uh, you see this? Like, I just don't burn my candles all in one shot. You know, I've had this one since 2013. This is Crisp Morning Air. I bought this when it first came out. All of these candles have turned this seafoam color, even though I kept them in perfect lighting conditions. But it smells great. And um, if you put out the wick properly, you won't get the smoke taint lingering in the jar. Jordan, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Ooh, Amanda says, Amanda, you also, there was a couple comments that you left. I was laughing at. Um, I've read all of your comments to all my recent videos. In fact, what I have on my agenda today is to really try to catch up on responding to a lot of your comments. But uh, Amanda says, I keep mine halfway to Narnia in my wardrobe. Awesome. Perfect location. Do you ever, honestly, Amanda, do you ever actually stick your hand to the back of the wardrobe just hoping that maybe you'll feel pine trees and snow cold breeze do you ever i mean we're all adults here but if i had a wardrobe i'd be doing that every day my imagination gets the better of me sometimes this is interesting cmm do you recommend replacing the lids after each burn i usually do but sometimes my husband throws the lids away while the candles are burning what's your husband doing don't throw out the lids no you just what you don't have to replace the lids what you need to do is uh i gotta quickly put this out and relight it because this hasn't pulled out yet the way you want to put out a candle just in case you don't know where is my so you can use your your wax or your wick trimmer but let me get in close here um, it's gonna be very hard to see but what I'm doing is I'm gonna take that wick and I'm going to bend it down look at that into the wax there's no smoke there's no smoke taint. And then after it's been sitting in there, just for a little bit, push that wick up so it's standing straight up again, just like that. And then let this completely solidify. And then when you're ready to put it back on the shelf, put the lid back on. That will prevent smoke taint from getting inside the jar. If you have a candle lit and you put the jar right on it, and it smolders and you see the billowing clouds of white smoke inside. The next time you smell that candle, it's gonna smell like burnt wick and smoke. Um, so very, very easy solution to that dilemma. It's not a dilemma. Let's put this cozy back on. In my clittens, they take all the lids off so the jars, so the jar candles to stop people from picking them up by the lids. Ooh. Um, yeah, I mean, I have to be, I have to, I, I hate to pick on my, pick out, pick on my father. But the first time I took him into a Yankee Candle outlet, it's the first thing he did is pick up the candle by the lid and it smashed on the floor. So that is a problem. But taking the lids off, I just... Maybe it's just principle. I don't... I love lids on candles. I, I, I just can't stand when the wax is exposed to the air because... What that means is um, oxidation, just like wine, right? Or, 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 you know, think about like a bottle, a two liter bottle of Coke or Pepsi. You know, 
when you displace half the bottle of Pepsi and you put that cap back in, now it's not filled with Pepsi. Now it's filled with half oxygen, half, half Pepsi. And there will be an oxidation experience. Oxidation is not necessarily bad, but over a course of time, it will completely damage uh, the beverage. Same thing with wine. So if you, what you can do is you can buy uh, as a product um, on the market. There's many different companies who make it. It's cans of argon gas. And what these are used for uh, our restaurant industry. When they say use half a bottle of wine, they spray that argon gas into the bottle and then put the cork back on. What that does is the argon gas is... Uh, it doesn't react uh, with the wine, or in a second I'm going to explain why you should use it with candles. It, it won't, it, you know, it won't uh, physically change the wax or the wine in any way. So what it does is it displaces the oxygen in the jar. So small investment. Those little cans, great, great argon gas. You know, you spray a little bit into your jar and then pop the lid on. That way, you'll remove all of the oxygen, oxygen that's in the jar. Um, I don't, I don't do it. I used to do it, um, but if you want to really preserve your candles, that's the best way to do it: is to make sure that you're displacing the oxygen from the jar and replacing it with argon gas. Go to any wine shop; you'll find it. Carol's leaving. Bye-bye, Carol. And I'm sorry about the stream if it's having troubles. Apologize about that. You know, what we need to do is let me know if there's any of you out there that want to... Uh, become a moderator for Smell It Sundays. Um, if anyone, you know, makes it, let's say, 90, 80% of the time to these lives, um, let me know if you want to become a moderator because we, you know, we're slowly starting to get these inappropriate trolls. And the sad thing is, if you're listening, trolls, uh, I know, I, I know who you are. And do you want me to tell people who you are? Maybe you don't care. Thank you, Leslie. Leslie reported them. All right, so Leslie, bingo, bango. You're a moderator. That doesn't mean don't feel obligated to show up every Sunday. I know everyone has a life, but when you're when you're in the forum, uh, and I miss something like those posts, um, um you know, check out on stuff like that, because I, I honestly don't keep my eyes glued to the screen. And Nicole, well, as you as a moderator, and what you guys can do is just um, what everyone has already been doing. Just remind people about things that I'm forgetting, um, uh, like new videos, uh, eBay links, the... Facebook links, stuff like that. Yeah, and Eric is here all the time. So we have three moderators. First come, first serve. And I love all three of you guys. Trust all three of you guys. 
And look at this. We have this is uh, was it Z this is getting fun. Zweebel Jack 9000, you are the oldest candle ever. Yeah. I'll go with that. If that's an insult, you really know how to make uh, me feel great cuz Yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't mind anyone calling me an old candle. That is the worst, that is the worst insult you could give me <laughs> in, in a bad way because it makes me feel good. Ba -ba -ba. Um, uh, industrial wasteland. Burn. Lol. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, all right, it's question time because we're about to wrap up things. Um, any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to start. I'm going to have to, to, to promote a few things. Make sure that I am keeping you guys up to date. Something I don't normally talk about, but I kind of drop it in every now and then, is Patreon.com. If you don't know what Patreon is, it is essentially a site where you can uh, add a credit card and they'll automatically take out a certain amount of money, whether it be 50 cents or 20 bucks every month, the first of the month, and you can donate, contribute, pledge uh, whatever spare change you have to creators, uh, the folks producing content on YouTube. Uh, and this, at, at this current date, it's the best way uh, and the most reliable way. It looks like YouTube's coming up with their own system of contributing. You could do super chats. I, I don't recommend people do super chats. Um, because there's nothing I can really reward you with. But with Patreon, there's different tiers. There's different things. If you, you know, donate a dollar a month, that is huge. Huge. You don't understand. If everyone donated one dollar, we would meet our financial goal. And uh, we wouldn't have to stress out. I wouldn't have to stress out so much about keeping um, the budget tight. Um, but... If you get into $5, $10, $20, you get all of these incentives. So if you haven't checked it out, go to patreon.com slash the candle enthusiast. You'll see the link uh, to at the end of every one of my videos. You also see the wall of flame at the ev at the end of all my videos uh, where, you know, you, you pay a certain or you contribute, you pledge a certain amount, and you get your name or your business on that page. Um, if you want to promote your channel, if you want to promote your business, it's an awesome way to do that. Or if you just want to have your name in the credits, because at that level, you're essentially associate producer. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of people have been supporting me and not only that, they've been with me for a long time. So it's about time I recognize all 30 of the Patreon members. With you 30 folks, we're raising $512 a month. That's huge. And I have to say it, that that money is not for me to buy Mickey Mouse or to buy new strings for my guitar or to buy television screens. That money, 100% of it, 100% of it goes into making videos like you saw, uh, one, like ones I posted yesterday. The in-betweens, the aromatic adventures, the Lizzie Borden, the Santa's Village. All of those videos take a lot of money. The candles, I can buy on my own. I, you know, I'll, I'm not using that money for buying candles, but Patreon is huge. But I don't ever want you to feel like the only way to contribute to the candle enthusiast or aromatically speaking is by pledging money 
viewership, viewership, viewership is always the most important way um, uh, to support this channel. That and I guess getting friends to su subscribe. Uh, that's that's also huge. Um, so just have to put that out there. Also, eBay, it's the same thing. All of that money is going right back into the 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 show. Look at this. We have five moderators. We're gonna keep it at that. Actually, I'm gonna just add one more. And so we have six moderators. So at any given time, we should have at least one of these folks in the chat room. Bum, bum, bum. Want to do that one. Actually, one second. Yeah. Oh, and the subscription boxes. See, thanks. This is why I need moderators. Uh, subscription boxes are adorable. Uh, what are the subscription boxes? I, on my travels, on my journeys through New England, uh, I'm going to be going to Los Angeles again. Uh, eventually, I'm going to get going down to Houston. Uh, Virginia is on the horizon. Uh, old Quebec City is also on the horizon. Uh, all the uh, kind of stuff. On my travels, what I do is I try to pick up the most interesting finds. Candles, yes. Candles for sure. Every subscription box is going to come with candles, whether it be from a huge company or like a mom and pop shop that to me are what I qualify as like unique finds. Uh, but what's also great about the subscription box is that I throw in a bunch of other little extras and treats and bonuses. Every box is themed based on the month. Our Christmas subscription box was, man, I wish I could have shared everything that was inside. It was just loaded with Christmas goodness. The box actually lit up. It looked like a little chimney. Uh, I loved putting them together. Um, but, um, uh, you know, say for example, I put, uh, for the November, I think it was the November box, I took leaves and pine cones. And, well, let me, I'll tell you where they were from. They were from the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. I collected some, some pine cones and some leaves, crushed them up, and lightly roasted them in the oven. Got to be very careful when you do that, because pine cones are very flammable. But, roast them very gently, and I put them in a little jar and I sent them out in the subscription box. So that doesn't really cost any money, but how cool is that? To have that a little token like that, um, that is relevant to my show. It's an awesome like thing for me, to me that's a romantic token to have. So I try to be as creative as I can to, to really make the subscription box boxes really fun so the subscription box remember is always the first and foremost thing about the subscription boxes it's 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 for a contribution it's for a pledge which I hopefully one day I, I, I will be able to figure out a way where I can significantly decrease the price while allowing more so the the, the deluxe Subscription box is already filled. Uh, the three spots are taken. I can't make any more than that. But there are nine openings for the the subscription box, the non-deluxe, which is, trust me, it's really not that much uh, of a difference. Except, you know, a lot of the little items like those leaves or uh, trinkets that I find, little gifts, last... last uh, uh, in January, the theme was beverages, alcoholic beverages, libations, you know, celebrate the New Year's. And I sent uh, wine keys, like wine keys that I've used, wine, like corkscrews, that I've used throughout my career working in the wine industry, because I have hundreds of them. I sent little tokens like that. So you get those little bonuses. Uh, so the prices are $75 for... Um, the standard box i don't want to call it standard because it's an awesome box uh and that is uh it's gonna have 30 
to $35 of value. Value isn't in dollar bills inside that box, but there will be extras. That'll be value that's not financial. Value in work and creativity and awesome little finds. Um, and you're guaranteed, it's usually at least two candles, but if it's a very expensive luxury candle, it's one candle. It's most likely two or even three. The, the deluxe uh, is a two to three candles. Most times it's kind of, it's like four, because I'm, I'll throw in a bunch of uh, like sample travel tins and uh, just a little bit bigger. You get a few more cool items that come along with it. So if anyone's really interested in the deluxe, uh, I would really have to figure out how to pull it off because it actually takes a lot of time because I have to know for sure that like, I don't want to be going out and buying five candles and then two people drop off and then I'm stuck with all this money or all these candles, these products that now I'm not making money for them. Um, so, uh, ba -ba -ba. so check them out. It, the, only if you can spare it. The last thing I would ever want is someone who's not in a financial situation like myself to be spending $75 or $100 a month for a subscription box. But I would say if you can, uh, go for it and share, share, share the experience. I would, I would love for someone to actually v like vlog, film an unboxing of this subscription box. Um, so for those of you who are do receive the subscription boxes. Uh, you know, hopefully that you can do that. I'm trying to read all your comments. Yes, there are two different types. Momo, how much is the subscription box? I have my own pine cones. <laughs> But Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Uh, Nancy said, what did I miss? Sounds like you had some excitement. We're just talking about the subscription box or uh, Patreon. Just a way to help the show. And Eric, thank you for linking that up. Momo, so it's not the value of the candles, it's a contribution. It's in return what you're receiving is obviously not going to be $75 worth of products. The whole point is to uh, donate to the show. Um, so if obviously the value of what's inside the box does not match what it's being, uh, what the cost of the box is. In fact, it's about half. What have I missed? Have you said what your oldest Yanku candle you've seen is? Um, yes, Lori, you're going to have to go back to the, the beginning. Watch. I have I shared a lot of my old Yankee candles today. But since we're, we're getting to that one hour and a half point, we are going to close this up. I'm going to use the next eight minutes for any questions. I'm going to keep my eyes right here. And you guys let me know if you have any questions. Oh, look at this. Scott, very nice words. Thank you. We have a baby Yankee Candle fan on the way, end of July. Laura, congratulations. That is super exciting. My thoughts and good wishes are with you. And I just lost this. Yeah, that's a glimpse. That's a glimpse of the, the of the collection. 
in the background. You know, <laughs> it's just a mess today. Uh, usually I'm not filming with this camera, obviously. This is my cell phone that I'm using. Um, so this has a much wider angle, so you see a lot more when it's positioned like this. Look at you guys. Very nice words. Yes, contribution, a pledge. It, it funds it funds the content. Do I see Brian, perfect. Will you ever review candles post burn or make empty candles wax videos for the month? I don't go through a candle a month. I've never burned a candle in a month. Uh, so th these videos I see on YouTube of people like having this is what I burn this month and they're all empty. It blows my mind. I don't know how they're going through these candles so fast. Um, they really should be giving you at least 150 hours of burn time for a large jar. And that is a lot of time. And if you're doing that times like 5 or 10, um, something's up. Unless you're burning them all at the same time. So I don't do post burns. Uh, or I don't do empties. Um, but instead of doing post-burn, I do something that I came up with. Uh, I'm going to get the trademark. I'm going to get the trademark for this name, Aroma Prison. Aroma Prison. Um, the process, I put in the application for the process for the trademark. And uh, the Aroma Prison is when I take five grams of the actual candle and I put it inside of an airtight vessel that is neutral in aroma. And what I do is I put this in a double boiler or just imagine like a pot of not boiling water, but hot water until that wax fully melts. What that'll do is all of the oils will volatize and in the negative space in this jar, you'll have all of, you know, you'll have the profile of the candle uh, in its airborne state. And this way I can analyze it like this. Now I don't do this for every candle because chopping up candles is very painful. But these candles I did back in October, these were part of the Coventry Creation Witches Brew Candles, not the Yankee Candle, uh, Coventry Creations. And I'm telling you right now, even with that five grams, this thing is extremely strong. And it's your best way to uh, get a sense of what the candle is going to be like after it's burned. Um, you know, post burn, like I burn the candle and I talk about my experience. There's so many different variables that go into, you know, how your candle burns. If you're burning it right, how tall your ceilings are, how much humidity is in your house, if you have a cross draft, the air pressure outside or in another room versus the room you're burning it in, uh, the natural uh, current flow in your room. There's quite literally hundreds of different variables uh, when it comes to burning candles. So for someone to say, I rate a candle based on like one through 10 burn, uh, like, um, th or th throw, that's a word I just don't use. The only time I use throw is when I smell it cold, like if I smell this candle, uh, this is throwing off a lot of aromatics. That's the only time I'll use that word because throw is not, for me, I don't want to create an argument, but throw is not, what does it mean? Does it mean intensity of the candle? Does it mean how far the, the fragrance travels? Does it mean uh, how strong it is up close to the candle versus how strong it is when you go into the next room? It covers so many different things that throw is just a blanket term for me for nothing. So it's one of my hopes, one of my goals is that we just work our way out of using that word throw. And every candle maker I've ever spoken with, first question I ask them, I asked them to define throw, and they gave me this look. It goes just like this. And what they're trying to say is, 
this is a bad word in their industry because nobody uses it in you know the wax making community um and Liz and I, I have a whole conversation that we have from Witch City Wix where we talked about throw. And she really just boiled it down to an excellent, she could write like uh, an article on this concept because she's got so much feedback. Oh man, that was a long answer for a short question. Where is Santa? That is a good question. Santa... Santa is over there. He's passed out. He's lying with Elsa's stuff, her paraphernalia. But, uh, and Laura says, I would like to see an empties video. Well, let's do an empties video. We'll do it real quick. These are two empties that I have right here. That's it. We got peppermint bark and we have Merry Christmas. I love this candle. I bought seven of these. Uh, this is a 2013 limited edition. Burned lovely. The scent carried very wonderfully and was intense throughout my living space. And this is the one, this is one that's very special. This uh, got me back into Yankee Candle around like 2012, 2011. I found this on a clearance aisle at Staples. I picked it up, I smelled it, and I said to myself, you know what? I love candles. Why, why did I ever stop buying them? So uh, this, is, this jar is very special to me. And it's because of that reason why it remains one of my favorites. Although I have heard people say that they have bad experiences with the carry or the intensity. That's my empties. There's, of course, others. Um, but I don't move through candles quick. How is Rudolph Santa getting along with vintage Santa? You know what? You know, they, they, they're okay. They're okay because they fully understand that uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Santa is a fictitious character, right? He is a character in a movie. I'm going to try to find him. Where did he go? I honestly can't find him. Did Santa, did you do something? Did you do something with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Santa? This is Santa. This guy I found at a random Goodwill while I was on the road. And since then, he has been a staple of the candle enthusiast. I've had a bunch of people come out and say, what are you doing? Like, this is gimmicky. This is, this is, you know, just like a cheap joke. I don't look at it that way. I feel like this guy is a travel companion. He's my uh, Wilson. He's my, he's my, I guess, well, that's just it. I don't really speak to him, but I feel like having him around when I'm filming keeps me in the state of mind of what I'm filming for. And that being imagination and being youthful. I really am concerned about where the Santa is. Oh, Nancy. She goes, I'll make you some peppermint bark if you like it, Shane. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, however, the February usually marks the time of the year when Knock off on the sweets, 
you know, spend a little bit more time in the gym, work on the diet a little bit. This year, things got a little out of control. Um, <laughs> so right now, like, I'm so used to having those, like, after dinner chocolate sessions. And I just need to take a break for that for a while. But after that, Nancy, I'll t t t totally take you up on your author offer. I am burning uh, dreamy summer nights right now. That is just a pillar candle. But this is dreamy summer nights right there. It's got a cozy on. I hope Yankee doesn't steer away from the story and become Bath and Body Works. Yes, I... Um, to me, Yankee Candle, and I think uh, um, Desert Wastelands, um, or Desert Wasteland, he, he agrees with me. You know, Yankee's about the story. It's about the nostalgia. It's it's. Oh, this looks like a, you know, something that would be sitting on the shelf of my grandmother's pantry. Um, you have all of these images that provoke heartwarming feelings. Look at this, season of peace. There's a story right there. There is a story. Uh, we're, Bath and Body Works, I have nothing against. I have nothing against Bath and Body Works candles. However, they are very literal. Uh, seldom do they have pictures. You know, right here, pra praline, pecan. Guess what? It smells like praline pecan. You know, I, I would say Yankee Candle would, maybe back in the old days, they wouldn't call it praline pecan. They would call this, like, you know, um, I don't know. That's a hard one. I can't think of a name. Caramel Shop. Uh, roadside, roadside Treats. I'm thinking of the I Love Lucy episode where they're driving to California and they stop off for uh, the, the praline pecans. But lavender vanilla, lavender vanilla, it smells like lavender vanilla. And the thing I'll say about Bath and Body Works is the candles smell awesome. I have noticed a very significant respiratory problem, though, on some of the candles, uh, where... Uh, after burning them for a long period of time, chest starts to hurt. That that does scare me a little bit. But that might just be an allergy for me. It maybe doesn't translate to everybody. Um, yes, I've got to try a Game of Thrones mar marathon with that candle. Yes, you should. Yes, you should. And I, I'm... I've been saying it for almost a full year now. I do have other candles that are completely unrelated to Game of Thrones that would go lovely. Kringle just retired one. If I can show it. It's here somewhere. This right here. If you're like, if you're Jon Snow at heart, if you enjoy the segments, the stories of Game of Thrones, where they're up north, uh, on the wall or over the wall, the snowy landscapes, this is a candle by Kringle that has been retired, so I don't want to, like, bum you guys out, but um, I can find these if you, if you need help. This one is called white woods even the name is perfect but this is minty this is spicy this is floral and it just smells cold it it, it smells cold because of the mint right it does smell like perfectly fresh mint no menthol mentholiptus hall's cough drop thing this smells like fresh mint and cedar a lot of different pine notes that sweeten it up. Of course, you have some citrus in there to further sweeten it up. That is a beautiful candle for Game of Thrones. And I have I have more. I'm just waiting to do that episode. 
Is Monica back? Okay, so Monica is back. And she says, Bath and Body Works candles make me sick too. Um, yeah, actually, I remember, Monica, you saying that to me. And then... Um, later, when I started to burn them, I noticed it too. And Eric, if I'm not mistaken, also had the same experience. But, you know... Um, that was a long time ago. Um, they do soy, uh, vegetable wax blends now. Maybe they're better. It's been a while since I burned a Bath & Body Works candle, but they do smell awesome. And if, if, for any of you guys that was were here last weekend, uh, and I showed some of the Spire Side candles, they're Disney-inspired candles. This company, I was always gonna... Oh, I know Anthony. Anthony's a big fan of them. I wish she was here for me to say this. Um, I was always kind of on the ropes with them. I liked their candles, but... I don't know. I, there was just something that restrained me from purchasing a lot of their products. However, they... Th their labels have become so incredibly gorgeous. And I started reading the fragrance descriptions, and they're really interesting. So I purchased like six of them now. Um, I tried contacting contacting them directly, but they're 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 getting to that 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 high level production um, company. So it's it's not like a mom and pop thing. Uh, but I have a bunch of them. I will be doing a video on them soon. I'm excited. They just released a, sp a very special edition limited release candle that is really nice. And it pulls at the heartstrings. I'm a big Disney fan. And this one... Wait, 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 what is this? Hi guys, we just touched down in LA, headed to Disneyland. I'll be sure to watch this when you get, when, when I get at the hotel tonight. Okay, Nikki, if you do something for us, I will send you free, free of charge, free candle, I'll find something special. Go do a meet and greet with one of the princesses. Like my brother does. My brother's got a whole channel where he does, he just, like he interviewed Minnie Mouse. Like who does that? My brother. Leave it to him and it's awesome. Uh, interview one of the, the princesses. Get some video. Have a shout out. Say, hi candle enthusiasts. I don't care if it's Jasmine or Rapunzel. Uh, have them give uh, the candle enthusiast a shout out. Uh, um, and uh, maybe even, I don't know, bring a candle as a gift if you want. If you do that, something like that, anything you do, I'll send you a free candle uh, because that would just be really cool. I love getting shout outs from the princesses and it makes great Instagram videos. Real quick, real quick, two, three seconds, tops. And have a great time, Nikki. I was supposed to be there this time of year it was actually would have been right about now, like a week ago I was supposed to go and couldn't make it happen. Monica, you've been watching this whole time. And here I feel bad because I missed your live yesterday. Monica and my brother uh, have a live Saturday morning chat, uh, all Disney related. My brother recently got up, it was like three o'clock in the morning. He went to Hollywood Walk of Fame, you know, with the stars on Hollywood Boulevard. He went there right outside the El Capitan Theater, the Disney owned theater, uh, where the Katy Perry uh, dedicated, I don't know if she dedicated, but she announced Minnie Mouse's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, long overdue, but he was there early in the morning. He got all this great footage. 
check that out if you're a Disney fan. Uh, channels Eric Peter Carlson, but they do have lives every Saturday. And I feel bad because I missed out on it yesterday because I was shipping eBay products. I was grocery shopping. I was just, it's my errand day on Saturday. So have fun, Nikki. Bath and Body Works smell like kerosene while burning, and they never used to. I, I can't really make a comment there. Um, however, I know there's a lot of Yankee Cant or Bath and Body Works fans out there. And if anyone has a good idea of candles that I should buy, I heard there's a new collection, Angie or Rebecca was telling me something about it. Tell me what you want to see me evaluate. I'll go out, I'll buy the candles, I'll evaluate them, I'll have a whole Bath and Body Works uh, video. I just, I don't keep up to date with Bath and Body Works. Uh, collections like I do with Yankee Candle. Monica asks, am I coming to Disneyland? Yes, I think right now it's going to be, you know, like April, May-ish. I hope it's April because May it'll be hot and busy. Um, but, you know, it's just hard to avoid the crowds no matter what time of the year you go now. Nicole asked, did I find the Pillsbury candles yet? I didn't. And what makes me angry is I was at a stop and shop yesterday, but it recently was converted to a Tops. Tops. That used to be like a northern New York grocery store, I think. And I looked at the candle section, and all they had were vi uh, village candles. I will find them. I will buy them. I will evaluate them, and it will be a lot of fun. If you don't know what she's talking about, Nicole is referring to she found some Pillsbury uh, treat candles, like cinnamon buns and like croissants. Whoa, review the new low profile Bath and Body Work candles, avocado coconut and carrot nectarine. That sounds really interesting. That, wow. When you mean, when you say low profile, what do you mean? Like, they're not popular? Jackie Brown. All right, so I went away, but I still had you on TV. I live about five miles from Disney Orlando, and I'm going to make a shout-out to you from a princess. I have a season pass. Thank you so much. It's been years, years since I've been to Walt Disney World. Um, I'm a big Disneyland fan. Um my family or my brother or my sister-in-law whatever it may be we're planning a trip to walt disney world one of these days soon uh i can't wait to go but a shout out and bonus points bonus points if it's ariel <laughs> or bell now i'm just starting to sound creepy but those were my princesses growing up uh i guess cinderella too uh, I watch Cinderella on VHS, like, every day. Do I have a shop? I do have a shop right in my area. Um, I just have to stop off. I will get them. Maybe we'll do it for next Smell It Sunday. Uh, season pass. My dream in life. My dream in life is to have the Disney Premier Pass, which is a coast-to-coast pass which gets you into the park no blackout dates whether it be disneyland or walt disney world um it costs about fifteen hundred dollars a year but man like 
I can think of a lot of things that people would spend $1,500 on a year that like I don't I don't like indulge in things like that like I don't spend fifteen hundred dollars a year on candles I certainly don't um, so having that coast to coast premier pass would be awesome there's an Ariel's Grotto oh yeah there is an Ariel's Grotto in uh, Disney World they just closed the one in Disneyland sad face sad face um, another reason why you should check out my brother's video, because he documented the, essentially the, the last visit to Ariel's Grotto. Nancy, yeah. Time to, time to do Disney. You know what? I will go out on a limb and say it will in some way change your life for the better. If you've never been to to a Disney park, look at that! Look at that! Nicole went to uh, Disney World uh, in December. She sent like this care package for me, and it was perfect because I opened it up on Christmas Day. Monica was there. My brother was there. Um, it was, it was just, it was absolutely awesome. And, uh, the reason why this is empty is because it was consumed in like a week because it was so good. Um, uh, Disney does have their own line, Disney parks, their own line of coffees. And you picked out the perfect one. Road trip for the candle enthusiast group to Walt Disney World. Let's raise money for it and I'll book the flight. You guys, anybody can meet me. We'll, we'll all hang out at Disney World. And first stop will be Epcot to ride the Frozen ride. My treat, I'll buy everyone a dessert like, like ice cone, something like that. I don't know. I'm making stuff up now. We need shirts. Um, that's a good point. And I know I'm going over time. So if anyone needs to check out, feel free to check out. Um, we've been going on for a long time. But that brings up a great point. T-shirts. What, what do you guys think would be uh, good merchandise? Uh, is for, for, I'm getting all my notifications off the phone, for the candle enthusiast. Uh, Witch City Wicks, Liz has these awesome little stickers. I love this. Um, so I was thinking like a postcard, that's not actually a postcard, but just like a, like a business card card, but just bigger. Um, uh, I was thinking about stickers, there's t-shirts, there's hats. I have a really cool idea and I don't want to give it away uh, that I think is very unique, a very unique idea I'm trying to work on. There's another product that I'm trying to get made so we have some revenue for you, you fans to, to purchase. Um, but what, what, what do you guys, what would you want to see like as far as merch, Santa merch? <laughs> so yes, I would be much happier to put Santa on a t-shirt that says, I don't know, something funny, a nice tagline. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have any catchphrases, but that would be cool. Reusable bags, like tote bags? Lighters is a good one, lighters. Where has Candle Cafe Anthony had to check out a while ago? And thank you very much, Richard, for saying that I am in, including Anthony uh, or f over your favorite channels. That's really awesome to hear. Lighters, okay. There's one I did not think of. I was thinking about matches, like 
again, a Yankee Candle. I w it wouldn't be one of these. It would be one of those, you know, you slide the little drawer out and pick a match and shh, like that kind of matchbook. Reusable tote. I like that. The t-shirt I'm afraid of because I would want to buy them in bulk. The problem there is you have to buy them like in every size, right? Like extra small, small, medium, large, 2XL. And then you have like men's fit, women's fit. Um, and then like hoodies would be awesome. I love hoodies. But again, the price would probably be too steep. Uh, the t-shirt would be great advertisement, though. You're right. Um, there's a great company called... Oh, God, I'm forgetting the name. They're based in Los Angeles. Uh, essentially, it's like if you want to buy a shirt, you place an order with them on my page, but the order gets sent to them. They print the shirt of your size, and then they send it to you. So I have no... Like, I don't have to do anything. I'm not shipping to you. Uh, and they're really good with, like, if it's, you know, you're not happy with the, the, the artwork, if it looks weird, they'll replace it. Um, Spreadshirt, thank you. Spreadshirt. Um, they do hats. They do T-shirts. So maybe we'll start doing that. Well, maybe we'll start start doing that. The, the sad thing is with Spreadshirt is that the sale of one T-shirt is really small like my cut for again not my eye cut but for the, for the production it's like something like a dollar for one t-shirt i don't know if we're going to be selling that many t-shirts but it's still worth a shot entire car wraps yes that would be perfect yes um so spreadsheet maybe we'll do that And then, like I said, I'm working on two secret uh, products, merchandise, some merchandise that I think I think are going to work out. One, I'm working with a company uh, who makes a particular product, and then they're going to customize it for me. The other one, I have to completely design, make, and have them manufactured. Uh, but I'm confident that you guys will really like them. Coasters is another great one. Zoe Jane, Poland is in the house. Hi guys, Poland is here. Glad to have you, Poland. Is Monica still here? Monica's from Poland. Bumper stickers, oh God. If I ever saw a bumper sticker from the candle enthusiast on someone's car... I don't know what I do. <laughs> All right. You guys have been awesome. Thank you for joining in today. Really good questions. Good chat. Um, I want to give a couple shout outs. Uh, Aaron James, a uh, brand new Patreon member. Um, uh, I want to thank you for your contribution. Uh, and I, I mean that sincerely from the bottom of my heart. Um, and I want to, there's some other folks who joined Patreon. I want to give them shout outs. If I can't do it right now, I'll do it. I'll do it in the future. Patreon.com. And, um, yeah, so we have 30 Patreons, $517. The goal is 1100 So we're a little less than halfway there uh, as far as reaching our goal. And we can start hitting the road. Let's look for these patrons. We have several new patrons this month. Oh, 
God, this is not going to work. I need a timeline. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I will, I will sh give you guys a shout out at some point. Can't figure out where you go to find the new folks. Um, what's coming up in the future? I'm going to spend the rest of the day commenting on uh, your guys' comments, responding to your comments. Uh, what's becoming a priority right now is the Witch City Wix candles. I really want to. I really want to evaluate a bunch of them. Um, but I want to, I don't want to just be sitting here. I want to give, give the candles. I want to be in a place, a setting that is worthy of Liz's candles. Um, and if you haven't visited Witch City Wix, visit her on Instagram. Witch City Wix is her handle. Uh, say hello. Say hi, how you doing? Say the candle enthusiast sent you. Uh, doing stuff like that is really going to help us out with getting more promotional codes. We had a great promotional code back in October. Uh, and according to Liz, it really worked out. That holy ground candle, which is my favorite, holy ground. I mean, it's, oh, it's amazingly beautiful. Uh, she said she could not keep that candle on the shelf after I made my video on on that candle, which just made my day when she told me that. Um, we also have, we're gonna be highlighting Cottage Wicks very soon. We're gonna be highlighting Spire Side. We're gonna be uh, highlighting uh, a very new company, Find and Refine Candles uh, very shortly. And uh, Eric, if Eric's still here, um, uh, I told you challenge accepted as far as Wolfbane. I will be introducing you to Wolfbane in its full large format jar very soon. Um, uh, still proved to be easier to find than Witch's Cauldron. Um, so excited to share that with you. And I'll pop a couple up on eBay so I'll give a chance for everyone to buy one and maybe we'll do a give we got to do a giveaway very soon so let me work on that i'll announce that on a spontaneous vlog this week um and then we have root candle root candle reached out to me and i'm being so irresponsible because this is a big big company they reached out to me they said they love my videos and they would love for me to review some candles i have three candles that they sent me um and uh, I'm going to be producing some videos on them as well. So that's what's coming up in the near future. Um, so thank you for joining on this Sunday. I hope everyone has a nice Sunday dinner planned, relaxing, maybe a beverage or two, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, some ginger tea, whatever, whatever is your, your, your bag. Um, and uh, you'll be seeing me, guys. You'll be seeing me, guys. You'll be seeing me, guys. You will be seeing me uh, very soon. Uh, thanks again for joining. Uh, question of the day. Now, you have to remember, you got to come back because this video isn't officially uploaded. Uh, you got to come back uh, and list this in the comments. Plus, listing comments are, it helps the video out a lot. What... What uh, I want? What what are some of uh, candle products, candle companies, a specific candle from a company? I want you guys to find one that's super passionate to you, a company or a specific candle, and say, I really, really hope that you evaluate this someday. Because I'm really going to start taking that seriously now that we have this live channel. I might just pop up live, evaluate the candle live, and we'll start knocking candles off the list. That's it for me, guys. Thanks again. Uh, awesome comments today. And I will be seeing you soon. Title of the video, the oldest Yankee Candle Halloween scented themed candle. Right here. 
at least as far as I've seen. If you have one that's older, or if you've seen one that's older, or if you have a picture of one that's older, uh, uh, please share it. Please share it. Email me, uh, candleenthusiast at yahoo.com. Bye-bye, guys. Have a great Sunday. Pleasure to speak with you all.